All right. So I hope the introduction gave you a little bit of uh, idea of what welding basically entails. Uh, welding is the joining together and the separating of metal products. And uh, the first thing we want to do is we want to go over some of the essential personal protection equipment that you need to pay careful attention to. Failure to pr um, follow the proper safety requirements can result in serious injury or death. So um, welding is a dangerous process, but as long as you're following the correct safety guidelines, you're going to have an incredible time learning this valuable skill. So first of all, we're going to talk about protecting the eyes. And safety glasses come in a whole different variety. You can get them anywhere from a dollar at the dollar store up to, you know, paying $25, 30 $40 for them at um, a home depot or a Lowe's. And what you want to always look for is make sure it has ISO Z87.1 or ANSI Z89. Those are two of the codes from the... Um, uh, International Standards Organization or from the American National Standards Institute that says that they're approved for a welding environment. You also want to protect your eyes with the use of a welding helmet when you are actually doing any kind of arc welding because the arc creates ultraviolet light that can burn out your retinas very easily. You also want to make sure you're wearing gloves. Gloves not only protect you from hot metal, but they also insulate you from the electrical current. Leather boots with steel toes are really a good idea if you are welding any type of heavy metals. Because um, you drop a piece of uh, metal onto your foot, it's not going to protect your foot from being smashed. Also, any type of cloth or vinyl product type of shoe could melt or burn very easily with all the molten metal that you'll be creating. When you're grinding, you will wear a grinding shield. And we also wear those when we're doing the acetylene torch, when we're cutting, and the plasma cutter because it does tend to blow a lot of spatter. Some of the essential equipment that you'll use to weld, especially with stick welding and MIG welding, are a wire hammer and a wire brush, and that's used to break the slag, or excuse me, break yeah, break the slag off of your weld after you've uh, laid a couple beads or one bead on um, with a stick welder, and you also need to have the MIG wire to cut the wire um, and get a get a new start etc you'll be constantly cutting the wire on the tip of your MIG welder um, you also do have to break slag off a certain flux core wire so make sure you have your wire brush and your hammer always handy pants and shorts and shirts first of all your shirts should be no nylon or synthetic uh, short sleeve shirts should be a very thick weave cotton or wool Pants should be, again, no nylon sweats or shorts because plastics are going to melt right to your body and it's very painful. Uh, blue jeans are the best. Cargo pants are good, but watch the number of pockets. Um, the spatter and the hot metal can easily get into your pockets, smolder, and can burn you. The AWS defines welding as a joining process that produces coalescence of materials by heating them to the welding temperature with or without the application of pressure alone and with or without the use of any kind of filler metal. So we're going to talk about forge welding real quick. Forge welding is what you normally see a blacksmith do when he's taking a mallet and, and he's hammering hot metal in, the, in a rod to make a point or something like that, like say he's shaping a poker. That's forging. He's using pressure, a great deal of pressure. Resistance welding means that you're taking you're running an electrical charge through the two pieces of metal and then under a great deal of uh, pressure you're squeezing them together um, and that's an example of resistance welding and then the other types of welding came about in World War one is called fusion welding and that's where we use electricity to create an arc that has an extremely high temperature and we are able to melt um, the, the, the work metal 
and filler metal that would be a rod or some sort or a wire that you melt into the gap in order to get this what we call coalescence coalescence means we want the granular structure of the metal from one piece to the next to be unrecognizable so that it looks like it continues straight through and becomes one piece instead of two separate pieces with like a, a glue bead in the middle that would be a bad thing welding is localized coalescence of metals and non-metals either produced either by heating the metals or to require the welding temperatures with or without the use of filler metals now um, they say non-metals here because you can actually me uh, weld plastics so when you go home today I want you to look at the end of a plastic tube of toothpaste and you'll see that the end has been crimped and welded together it's actually a form of resistance welding all right the OSHA the Occupational Safety and Health Administration identifies three basic categories of job events in terms of injuries and accidents and things like that an incident is something that could have happened for example